give them a shot. Me and mm-hmm. them, I can't tell them them some male lesbian. Me no want them kill me. Me no want them kill my daughter. Man was killed after a heated argument with men who labeled him as homosexual. Jamaica is a homophobic society. We grow up to hate homosexuality. I fought too hard as a gay man, but I don't want to push any part of it back into the shadows. Tonight on Afropop, the abominable crime. This is Afropop, the ultimate cultural exchange, an independent documentary showcase exploring the present day realities and contemporary lifestyles of African Americans and Africans around the world. Journey with Afropop and become immersed in an infinite array of lives, locales, and themes. Stories made real by empowering the many voices of the people who live them every day. Afropop invites you to embrace the true spirit of cultural exchange. They are called anti-buggery laws, and they refer to legislation that declares homosexual activity to be punishable by imprisonment and hard labor. That's the line of the law in Jamaica, and it sanctions violence and extortion against gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. Although 78 countries in the world criminalize homosexual acts, Jamaica is known by many civil liberties groups as the most homophobic place on earth. In tonight's film, written and directed by Micah Fink, we'll hear from Simone, a lesbian and single mother who was forced to flee her country after being shot and left for dead. We will also meet Maurice, a gay activist who after marrying his husband was subsequently outed and persecuted in a national Jamaican newspaper, making him a walking target for attack. Simone and Maurice are not only fighting for their rights, they're also fighting for their lives. Join me for tonight's feature, The Abominable Crime. August 29, 2008, right after Hurricane Gusta. My two brothers and my friend was at the house. It was four, four of us. us. Going outside, we realized that we lost the car keys. So we was kicking our foot in the water, kicking our foot in the water. Same time, I see two guys coming down the road. My brother said, Simone, be careful because see somebody on the veranda. The rain started pouring down now, so. We were running out the rain. I was in front. Eh? Simone was in front of me. And I hear gunshot, gunshot ringing now. And, then and I, I see like fire. The gunman shot me in the belly. So I want them to run. So I said, murder, run! Right there and then I realized it's something really bad. Gone man, gone man. Them shot me again for my shut up. I don't hear someone and I see my brother running. We know it was because we were gay. When I get up to run out, the boy said, the body man get away, but the lesbian dead. <laughs> I live like a refugee now. Left everything. Because if I go back for them, 
Then we kill me. And then I could sleep. Because my mommy got shot and I can't get in out of my head. My mommy was looking for a key and then they then shoot my mommy and then my mommy run and then she, she pretend like she dead. I got two shot. I can I can only show you one, but I can't show you the next one. <laughs> Cause the next one is like near my buttocks and that's kinda of being private and I got one here. I don't know if you can see it and get it, but it go here and come here. This cut is the cut that them cut me for the operation. I go and look for you and then I was crying. And then when she reached the hospital, she started crying. And then when she come out, she tell me that piece of her liver and her kidney gone. All of her kidney gone, but she have a piece of her liver. I'm really sorry, so she doesn't see all of them things there, yeah, Kayla? I'm sorry the heart take it cost yeah, you. It's okay. Everything you was going to say to me, it's okay. You sure? Yes, it's okay. I'm put a little smile on your face, please. Okay. People that were shot me, you know, them as can't tell them them say me a lesbian. So them want to kill me a lesbian for the damn Batman. Police lock up one of them, but the next one's still out. I don't want them to kill me, I don't want them to kill my daughter. So I'm not sure I forget myself out of here. And there are many, many countries in the world where being gay remains an abominable crime, where the lives of LGBT folks are threatened and who have to flee their country of birth. And that, my friends, as you know, is the lived reality of my husband, Maurice. We got married last year in August, but we decided to keep our marriage a secret in Jamaica because it would have created too many complications. I've been the face of the LGBT movement without being identified as a gay man. And that was necessary to maintain my safety, to maintain my credibility, to maintain my access. I'm Maurice Tomlinson. We ask the Jamaican public to support us in this call for the recognition of rights for all Jamaicans, including gays. According to Mr. Tomlinson, there's a strong case that the so-called anti-gay law enables people to commit human rights abuses against homosexuals. I had already received quite a few death threats simply because I had been publicizing the murders, the you know, home invasions, the attacks, as well as teaching my particular brand of anti-homophobia every week. And I knew that this information getting out, that I was married to a man, would just make it worse. World is in trouble! Anytime Mojo Banton come, Batty Boy get up and run! A gun shot me head back! Unfortunately, on Saturday, January 7th, 2012, the Jamaica Observer published a photo of our wedding, captioned, Jamaican gay activist marries man in Canada. His husband has been identified as Tom Decker, a police officer and pastor in the Metropolitan Community Church of Toronto. Tom Linson reportedly wept with joy throughout the ceremony. I sent a text to Tom, who then started to read the comments. You know, he kept notifying me how many death threats had come in. My Jamaican is not that good, but um, boom, bye, bye, uh, th those uh, hateful uh, dance hall lyrics. Uh, what does that mean? Um, that means shoot gay men. 
Boom, bye, bye, in a body boy, in. Who went up from the last demand, never feed him. The man was killed after a heated argument with men who labeled him as homosexual. The gruesome killing of 16-year-old Shane Gordon, as well as the injuring of his mother. The bodies of two men who were believed to have been homosexuals were found in an open lot on Trafalgar. This is the second chopping incident in recent times in the parish. I had to leave everything. I just felt that there was no one I could turn to in Jamaica for assistance. Um, I just needed to get out. But stopping the work now might be too premature. The work needs to be done. There is so much that can be done. But right now is not the time to be there. It is just simply too dangerous. And in order for the work to continue... But I'm not, I mean, I... I... I, I love you, Tom. You know that. I know. And I'm, I'm married well. And we're probably not, not ever going to see eye to eye on this. No. Uh, because I'd like to, I, as I said, I mean, I, I married a husband and I'm not willing to bury him yet. Right now I'm playing a game of hide and seek. And they are keep on seeking me. And I can't make them find me. This is Brian Williamson, and tonight is his memorial, and then I keep a little thing for him. <laughs> this is his home. Them kill him inside, them give him 79 stuff and kill him. Because Brian was one of the few who show him face just like me, so I guess that's what they kill him for, for being a gay and being a proud gay. JFLAG was formed to say, well, we're going to be the organization to stand up, let the world know what gay people has been facing, because gay people have been facing a lot of discrimination, a lot of homophobic attack in Jamaica. This is meted out from all different cross-sections, from the government, the police, the church, society in general. So it's like, you know, it's just us against the whole of Jamaica. I am very concerned that homosexuals in Jamaica have become so brazen they have formed themselves into organizations. Yes. J-Flag seeks to tell the world that homosexuals in this country are being violently abused. My answer to that straight is no. N-O, no. Most homosexuals are killed by other homosexuals because of jealousy. Those comments are very irresponsible. I've seen them for myself. I have been witness to these things, so I know. Once they find out that you are gay, Batman, let me use the word Batman, they want to kill you. It is Jamaica living. It is a two men out on the street. They look suspicious. Then saw them. Two weeks ago, a two guys run me down with my shade. Nearly killed me. Look at Simone. What happened there? She could have died. She lost a kidney and a part of her liver. They even tried to shoot her vagina out, saying that um, she didn't have any use for it since she wasn't sleeping with a man. And when I heard that she was shot, it was like, please don't let her die. Please don't let her die because, you know, I didn't want to lose another friend. Hi, Hi. Colleen is somebody I can talk to. She's my friend. When I explain everything, I tell her I have to leave the country. She's trying anything to help me. To help her to get off the island, we could get her to the U.S. Embassy to see if they would give her a visa, and when she gets there, then she could always file an asylum. This is the form. I'll fill it out for you. But you need to sign and make sure that you have everything that is correct. And this is my picture for the visa. And everybody say it looks nice. I will pretend to be the consulate and, you know, yeah, you can. and ask you uh, the yeah, question. Yeah, you can do that. So, Miss Edwards, so how long do you plan to stay in the United States, ma'am? Um, just for two weeks. Two weeks, but your application says eight days. Um, Are you sure about that? Uh-huh. <laughs> you got me on there. <laughs>
<laughs> well, yes, but you're going to need to really know what you're saying, and it's not foundation, it's federation. Federation. Yes. Remember, you can't be soft-spoken. They have to speak with confidence, speak with conviction. Let them realize that, you know, this is for real, this is who you are. I speak up a little louder, right? Speak up louder and speak <laughs> firmly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's All right now? Yes. All right, I have the confidence now. But I need to learn this tonight, eh? study it, eh? and know what I'm dealing with, and what I'm going to say. Can't have to get this visa <laughs> to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You're laughing, but I know it's, it's a serious It's a serious. Call in. I'm going to have to get out of here. I'm going to have to get out of here. When I go home at night, I go home with everything. I, I don't sleep. You know, I'm like thinking, why, why, why can't gay people just live their lives without anyone thinking they need to kill us? to go and hope and pray that everything comes true for me. I'm a bit scared, but not scared enough to back out. Uh, Simone went to the embassy, but she didn't get through at all. Oh, she went to the embassy, but what? She didn't get through. Meaning what? Meaning she didn't get the visa. And they denied the visa? Yes. Okay. Um, did they say why? Uh, she didn't ask me anything. She only asked me two questions. She asked me if I, if I ever travel and if I have a family in the U.S. And what did you say? I said, no, I don't have any family in the U.S. and I never travel. Well, unfortunately, the, the consular officer's decision over visa, visa matters is not reviewable, meaning there's nowhere to appeal that. If you go right back in there tomorrow or the next day or the next day, they're probably going to automatically deny you. I don't even want to think about that about my feelings. I feel sad. Calm me now. The danger will mean that. Um, them never grant me it, so I don't know anything can happen. So I just can't see me walking dead. Gay people in Jamaica always have to hide. As far as um, straight Jamaicans are concerned, once you're gay, you have no place in this country. We shouldn't exist. We're not saying that gay people should be obliterated from the face of the earth. <laughs> We're not saying that. My government has never said that. My government has never said that. And nor am I saying that. But because your behavioral pattern is in breach of all decency, guess what? Keep yourself to yourself. Jamaica is a homophobic society. We grew up to dislike homosexuals. We grew up to hate homosexuality. I don't believe God made anybody homosexuals, just as if I don't believe God made anybody a thief. God's concept is an Adam and an Eve, a man and a woman for continuity of the human race. And I hate the act of homosexuality because it has the possibility within it to cause the human race to become extinct. Thank you.
Yeah, that's how I was coming to do. Someone's story is a hard story. I can remember, but someone was young and going to school. She turned to me and said, Pearl, gentle, and said, I'm gay. I said, you're crazy. I thought it was me alone. She said, no, 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 I'm gay too. I was happy to know that I wasn't alone. We grow in a family with strong Christian values. I was the big brother. I would be there to protect her. I grew up in Spanish town. The root was there. That's the only place I know in Jamaica to live. It's where my parents have grown up and everything. But unfortunately, as a homosexual, you can't stay in the community. It hurt, it's sad to know that here in Jamaica, where I live, in a place where I grew up, they tried to kill me because I'm a lesbian. After getting shot, my sister went and lived with friends, so we have to separate. If I didn't have anywhere to stay, I literally sleep on the street. I didn't have phone or anything to communicate, but somehow I survived, and I have to run for my life. So her brother ended up leaving Jamaica. And then he got in touch with her and told her about where he was. So we tried to find out what's the best route. Getting to Europe was even harder. At the moment, when we were trying to get her out, we, we thought that it was more important to get her out and then try to get her child out after that. So she made arrangements with family members to do the best that she can for her child. I tried not to show my daughter that I'm scared. So I tried to tough up. I don't get emotional around her. My daughter, my beautiful daughter, my sister, she grew up. My mommy never get to live to see me reach this size, this age. Oh, Who is the king of the jungle? Kayla. Who is the king of the sea? Kayla. Who is the king of the universe? And who is the king of me? Kayla. <laughs> I am the king of the jungle. The king of the jungle is a lion. Sometimes she will say, oh, mommy, them shot you. And then they'll say, you have to take care of me. You're the only one I have. I can say it so because I sing it. One, two, three. I can make a song up. I can tell you. I didn't want to tell her that I'm running away. Imagine telling a seven-year-old that her mom, she adore and love so much, is going to run away. Despite the very real risk to his own life and safety, Maurice Tomlinson has been one of the most outspoken advocates for LGBTI rights in Jamaica. And I'm very proud to announce the 2012 very first recipient of the David Cato Vision and Voice Award, Maurice Tomlinson from Jamaica. As my mother tells it, during her youth, everyone knew at least one person in the village who was gay, but no one cared. People respected the privacy of others, and the anti-sodomy law was rarely, if ever, invoked. All this changed during the 1980s and 90s, when there was a coarsening of Jamaican society through a deliberate export of hate and intolerance to Jamaica by American televangelists. AIDS, uh, generally caused and believed to be caused by homosexual promiscuity, uh, is a violation, both of them, of God's laws, laws of nature and decency, and as a result, we pay the price when we violate the laws of God. In case anybody doesn't know, God calls it an abomination. It's an abomination. It's an abomination. They were always on air talking about how homosexuality is an abomination and HIV and AIDS are God's condemnation and judgment for gays. The previously unused law then became a fixture. The laws of this country are very specific. Burglary is an offense. It is an abominable offense. And it carries up to 12 years imprisonment. You cannot consent to burglary unless and until that law is repealed. The law is to be respected, obeyed, and adhered to. It's very simple. 
There's a challenge this evening to a controversial Jamaican law. A legal team and several human rights groups have joined forces to have Jamaica's sodomy law repealed. The existence of the law contributes to homophobia in a very direct way. One person had a knife stuck in his forehead. We've had uh, instances of, you know, stonings. Um, it's just been horrendous, the amount of abuses that LGBT Jamaicans have been exposed to. Hearing these stories, I think, is what converted me. Hearing about the abuse, seeing the people having to actually go and document and, and seeing the blood still dripping from people who have just been abused. I no longer felt comfortable staying in the background. So I started writing the newspapers and speaking on air as a lawyer saying, this is just wrong. So we are urging the government of Jamaica to act to repeal these sections. To me, it was a human rights issue. It's a fundamental human rights issue. It unleashed an avalanche of hate against me. The fact is, the anti bogri law makes me, at least to the average Jamaican police officer, an unapprehended criminal with few, if any, human rights. After the last set of death threats, my husband and I immediately saw the eerie similarities to David Cato. David had been outed as well in an almost similar fashion. A newspaper in Uganda had published a picture of David and some other LGBT activists with the caption, hang them, they're after our kids. And soon after that, David was murdered. I promise in David Cato's name that I will never abandon my role in the struggle for the full human rights of LGBT until those human rights are fully realized. Thank you. night I was with Kayla, I didn't tell her goodbye as in goodbye, because I don't think it's right for a parent to say goodbye. So I tell her that I'm going to travel, and I soon come back. So I left. I discovered that I don't need a visa to go to Turkey, and the plane go to Amsterdam. And the plane land in Amsterdam. I walk down to the immigration, and I tell them I'm not going home. When I said asylum, she said, yeah. She st I started to cry. And, and then the lady said, the immigration lady said, no, don't cry. You're safe. I promise you, you're safe here. Nobody's going to hurt you. I didn't want to cry about all the emotion feelings that what happened to me after the gunshot and my daughter and the lifestyle we live after me getting shot and not working, uh, knowing that I was the bread breadwinner to take care of her. It was just, everything was just rushing to my mind and knowing the fact that I leave her there and, you know, what can happen. So I was crying. This is my new home. I live here now. This is an asylum center. Probably 500 people live on this building. Most of the people that here don't speak English. They speak Somali, Arabic, Farsi, French. So it's kind of hard for me, but I try my best to go along each and every day. Everybody have different story. You stay here and you wait until you get your permit to live in this country. The 20th of this month will be 10 months. I haven't seen my daughter. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kelo, how are you? I want to ask you birthday. I know it's your birthday. If I miss it, I'm going to make it up to you, yeah? Yeah. I want to ask you You want me to come for you? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until the papers them come through. That's what I'm going to tell you all the time, so I'm going to wait. Until the paper come true, then we know if we can get you. Okay? No a soldier girl. Yeah. Soldier girl, I have to be strong, you know. 
I know you're strong, but you're sad. But Kelly, me sad too. It's going all right. Uh. I promise you, it's going all right. Uh. All right? Uh. People might think she not understand, but I think she understand. I think she understand. Kayla is the only child I had to tell Kayla, yeah, that I don't know when I'm coming. It's hard. It rip your heart out. It, it mash your heart in a million pieces. And I know their heart is also broken, too. Simone's story is more than tragic. You know, it's a mother and child, and there's no protection. So that means Jamaica is not protecting all its citizens as it, as it claims. About three months after Simone left Jamaica, I was pretty much out of two. You know, and then I realized that maybe it's just time for me to pack my bags and, and, and go. It's that sense of vulnerability that, you know, you can't turn to the police for help in case of anything. No that makes me really... That's why I'm happy that you get out safely. I am happy to. <laughs> really? But I don't feel... I'm not settled. It's going to take you a little while to settle. You may not, never be settled either. Because although I'm here and it's two years, I'm still not settled really. Sometimes I kind of regret leaving though because I feel like I left too early. <laughs> That's exactly where I'm at because it's like, there's so much work, there's to, be so much work to be done. There's and so people, much work to be done. Uh, uh, Tom, my husband, he just, he, he can't get it. He thinks I'm You're crazy, stupid right? to yeah. even yeah. want to want think to of going back. It's so painful sometimes and I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I'm Jamaican. You know, sometimes I hear about other countries who are making progressive moves and then I'm like, so why can't Jamaica, mm -hmm. you know? But then, you know, personal safety has to come first because if without that, then you're not going to be able to help at all. So that was a decision that I had to you're think listening, about. You're listening to my husband. You're talking <laughs> <back> to <laughs> no, no, but remember, I've been there, done that. But you know how crazy Jamaicans can get and how serious they can get. Too many people we have lost. Well, I I'm still... Trying to figure it out. Figure, figure it out. Yeah. I'm still, my heart is definitely going back. I kind of lift my hat off to him, you know, trying to go back because I know it's something that needs to be done and just everybody, all of us can't run away. I know that if I go back to Jamaica, I am not going back with the protection of the Jamaican police. And that's scary, but I need to go back because you can't be here and be accessible there. We have to see Jamaican gays functioning in Jamaica if we want to see Jamaica become tolerant towards its Jamaican citizens. You just don't even want to see the risk. It gets, sometimes you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, she's looking? Yeah. No, I didn't say how she looked. She's looking to look like. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm fine. fine, how are you? Where are you from? Where are you from? Jamaica. Jamaica? I have a future now. I never have a future in Jamaica. No, I have a future. So did it? It's kind of hard for me to be open because but just New Year, I don't know. Do you feel safe? Honest? Yeah. Good lie. Why are you still scared? Why are you still looking over your shoulders? Because I didn't... Like you're still frightened inside. Honestly. Because Scotchmen are used to it, as I must say, how much years I live in Jamaica as a lesbian, I'm used to for hide. Mm -hmm. The reason why you came to Holland is for you to be free. So now, be free. 
or not. It's better to be here than be in Jamaica because the torture you've been through, however, it's hard. It's hard. I've, I've lost more than I've gained. I tried to see if I could bury this homosexual life, lifestyle, it but it goes nowhere. Because it's, it's, in, it's, it's, it's in me. I couldn't put it aside and say, I'll come back next week. Like, because when, when I was with the girl, I was thinking about her boy. So you come now to kill me. You understand? They, they had proof that you're gay. It was somebody that we know, See. actually, because it's somebody that lives in the community. It comes as a shock to me because me and that boy brother went to school together. together. It's not like I want to run from them. I don't so want to run from you're them. you're just running for your life. I'm just running for my life. I, exactly. They don't know what they did to my life. They can never understand what they did to my life. They're not God. And God knows who I am. And no man can judge me. No man at all. They shoot me. Yeah, they shoot me, but I'm alive. Right now, I have my daughter to live first. I'm not need for revenge to nobody. Because fire, fire with fire, it's no good. I'm a fight with love, I'm a fight with my heart. Please. When I explained to him that I needed to go back, he, of course, being Tom, my lovely neurotic husband, thought it was the worst idea in the world. He said he wasn't going to come because he thought he would have added to my insecurity by being there. But then, thankfully, he changed his mind and decided that um, he needed to be there with me because if I was going to face any danger, we we're going to face it together. I really hope he doesn't regret coming. prove to this bigots that they can't chase us all away and kill us all. But some of us are willing to stick around and actually fight for what we believe in. For activists such as myself, there's always a debate. Do we pursue legislative change or do we seek to um, achieve a redress through the courts when we know there is discrimination? A judicial challenge will only result in a very narrow victory, which we'll then have to sell to the population. It is um, sometimes a hard sell. But if we get a legislative challenge, we are bringing the society along with us. The only way to change the society is for people to be visible, gays to be visible to their family, friends, etc., co-workers. So you're at this catch-22. The government wants us to be visible so that that will reduce the level of homophobia. For us to be visible, you have to ensure that there's security. The government doesn't want to provide the security or is failing to provide the security that they should because the law says it's illegal to be gay. No one should be discriminated against because of their, so, uh, their sexual orientation. Government should provide the protection. And I think that we should uh, have a look at the Bogre law. The government would be cautious in attempting any change in the Bogre law, as a majority of Jamaicans, 61%, said they would have a more negative view of the administration if it were to do that. As much as one might say it's a personal issue, but it's going to destroy the society. 
it's gonna destroy we youth, so we need to address it. We begin with news about the beating of a male student of the University of Technology by security They have come under attack on several occasions for their divergent sexual orientation. The man was reportedly set on fire by six men and then thrown into the Executive director of J-Flag noted this is the seventh such murder in the last three months. I started challenging Jamaicans directly as a gay man. We filed a case on behalf of two Jamaican gays who have suffered extreme abuses because of their sexual orientation. Our goal in filing this case is to repeal the anti-sodomy law. Hello, good evening. Here to see Lord Giffen. Can I have a name? Maurice Tomlinson. Well, it's an extraordinary law, Maurice, isn't it? I mean, I was looking at it again. Whoever shall, shall be convicted of the abominable crime of buggery shall be liable to be imprisoned and kept to hard labor for a term not exceeding 10 years. It's more about whoever shall attempt to commit the said abominable crime. <laughs> I mean, even in murder, you, you don't find the hideous crime of murder, the fiendish <laughs> crime of rape, but the very language of the law yes. incites people to hate hatred, degenerates hate. hate. Always at the back of my mind hoped to be able to find a case when, in which it could be tested. The fact that he, a British lord, is involved in overturning a British imposed law is just incredibly important. The fact that it's the law against sodomy, which he helped to overturn in Northern Ireland, is just invaluable. The court ruled that the law had to be reformed, repealed, and it was. Northern Ireland society did not break down. Promiscuity did not break out. We, we're not asking for full repeal. We're just asking for review. So in that case, what do you think are our chances, considering what the new prime minister said about a review? There are some problems. And there is a lot of prejudice still in both parties. The time will come when we will win that vote. Right. I'm, I'm hopeful. but. I just don't want to hear of any more murders. It, it's, it is overwhelming. No, it is. I'm sure it is. But don't be despondent. I mean, I've lived long enough, I suppose, to see causes which seem to have insuperable yeah. obstacles to them being, being won. Yeah. The, the world changes. And it's, it, it's impossible when you're in the middle of the period of change to say that the change is going to happen next year. Right. But um, every move we make helps to break it down, helps to, ridic helps to ridicule it, yeah. helps to show what damage it caused, because I don't think we should be talking about this petition without talking about the real life tragedies. It's been two years. I got my house, I get my paper. The way the house is set is it's just for me and her. I bought this picture frame because I wanted to put some picture in there with my daughter and also with me. But because my daughter is not here, I haven't put anything. I just make it stay empty. You know, a home is not a home without a child. Being separated from kill is like, you know, it's a punishment. Sometimes I wonder, what it gonna be like? What I'm gonna say to her? I'm gonna hug her? If I'm gonna hug her two times? <laughs> How does she look? She get bigger, she get smaller. What she gonna think? Me loving her, Kayla, it made me strong. It, you know, it gave me an extra drive. Tell me that you can do it. Wat vind je nou nog echt lastig als je Nederlands moet praten? Is het vooral de uitspraak? Ja. Ja. ja de R is moeilijk, hè? Ja, ja. Echt moeilijk voor mij. Ja, ja. Maar als ik ga school, ja, dan kan ik beter, beter, beter. Nou, ik praat. Ja. Een klein beetje, niet zoveel, maar het is goed. Ja. 
gaat steeds meer Nederlands denken misschien ook. <laughs> <laughs> nou, hartstikke goed. Komt wel goed met dat examen, volgens mij. Ja. Ja. Ja, wel klaar. Dan zie ik je niet volgende week. Nee, maar dat kijk, kom op. Kom op. Oké. Okay. Spannend. En waarom is het zo dat jij haar daar moest laten eigenlijk? En jij hier? Because ik heb een beetje een probleem op mijn land. Met mijn seksualiteit. Oké. Ja. Ja. Zo, ik flik van Jamaica. Oké, okay. ik wist niet dat ze daar in Jamaica zo moeilijk over deden. Jij moest mm. gewoon zelf weg. Ja. Yeah. Alleen. Dus ze komt lekker bij jou wonen weer. Ja. Yeah. Ja, gewoon bij mij. Ja. Ja. Als zij thuis werkt, ik moet helpen ook. Dus ik denk dat het heel belangrijk is om ik te spreken en te schrijven in Nederland. Ja, zeker. Ja. Ja. Ik liep haar. Ik had niet verwacht dat het was going to be so long. Ik weet niet of ze is mad with me. Which I asked her and she said, yes, yeah, she's mad at me small, but. So I tell her I'm going to make it up back to her. But I don't know how much she is. I don't want she to be too mad at me. I just do it because I want her to be happy. Even if I live well in Jamaica with her, everybody gonna tell her after a while that her mom is a lesbian. I don't want nobody to tell her her mom is a lesbian. I want to tell her myself if anybody to tell her. I don't want her to go anywhere and nobody tells her, oh, your mom is a lesbian. Oh. No. They're gonna make she feel bad. Because I'm, I'm a lesbian, it's not a disease. I don't have AIDS. As if having AIDS is a problem, you know? But I'm not dying. Whatever I'm is, I'm not dying. You understand? So I just want you to be she and be comfortable with her and don't think about my life and think about hers. So that's why I do what I have to do. Once the moon has her daughter, she can feel safe and close that chapter of her life. You miss your friends and family, but you're not gonna miss Jamaica. You're not gonna miss the head. Oh Lord, good morning. Good morning. I decided to keep going back every week from Toronto so that I could continue teaching my class in discrimination law for the rest of the semester. We have to complete the syllabus today because this is the last class. Okay, remember when we discussed discrimination and we looked at what is immutable? Is it a function of nature or nurture or does it matter? I try not to dwell on the, the, the death threats because you just do what you have to do for the people who can't speak up for themselves, can't advocate for themselves. And I hope that my work will not be in vain. I know that there is a tremendous backlash right now um, by the religious right in Jamaica against the advances that we've made. I really had hoped to stay here, but I don't want to put my family at risk um, by being in Montego Bay. So that is the more important thing to me. I don't want them to be exposed to anything unpleasant. Tom, can you come a minute, please? If I were single, this would have played out very differently. I'm glad I'm married. I'm glad I have someone who loves me enough to go through this process with me. That's it, I think. I fought too hard to establish myself as a gay man in a relationship that is of my own choosing and one that I'm proud of, and I don't want to push any part of it back into the shadows.
What you look for? Yeah. Okay. Can you sign this for me? Enjoy your mom, okay? And thanks for everything, yeah. Bye. Five steps there. Happy Monsieur here. Oh, I'm a friend. This is Susan. Up high, down low. Ah, you <laughs> got me. All right, you good. You get to go in. All right. Up
A poll conducted by Jamaican national newspaper, The Gleaner, in 2014, found that 91% of citizens were opposed to any repeal of the anti-buggery law. Since 1994, the U.S. has recognized LGBT status as grounds for asylum. However, the government keeps no records on the number of claims it grants, and the application process is regarded as difficult and lengthy. For many hoping to love and live freely, the struggle continues. Check out blackpublicmedia.org for more information. I'm Yaya DaCosta. Thank you for joining me. See you next time on Afropop, the ultimate cultural exchange. It's poetry in motion She turn a tender eye to me Deep as any ocean Sweet as any harmony She blinded me with science Feminine biology Watching the world on SDPB2. Hi, I'm Yaya DaCosta, your host for a new season of Afropop, the ultimate cultural exchange, and you're watching World. This is America Reframed. It's challenging. The reason she didn't die that day is because she pulled the trigger. It's personal. This is our World Series. <laughs> this is our Super Bowl. It's insightful. Did you hear what they said to us? What? Congratulations, guys. Oh. That's about as real as you're going to get. This is our home. I can't imagine living anywhere else.
next on POV. They were a pack of lizards.